Hi, this is Anne Louise. Welcome back for Chapter 2 of Santa's Moonbeam. Now, let me see. Where were we? Oh, I know. Timothy was knocking at the workshop door. And we were lined up behind him. First me, then my brother, then my sister, and the dog. And the smell that came out of that workshop was cinnamon. Suddenly, the door swung open, and there standing in front of us was another little elf, all dressed in brown, brown cap with a pom-pom, brown shirt, brown trousers, brown shoes with little turned-up ends, and the pom-pom again, big black belt. And he said, welcome, children. My name is Cinnamon. You're at the Lego shop. <gasps> the Lego shop. We were so excited. We went sort of tumbling into the shop. And, Okay, children, just a minute. Everybody stand up. And we stood up because we had all fallen down on top of each other. And we started to look around. Well, there were cases all around the room with glass fronts filled with every kind of Lego imaginable. And Duplos. And we had some of those at home. So we were pretty excited. We could see the one that was the boat that we built with our dad. And we could see the one that was the castle that we built. And we could see the little cars that we had built. And we were wandering around the shop looking at all the Legos and, and remembering the Duplos from when we were little. I certainly remembered the ones that my baby sister played with. The Duplo that made itself into like a little doll carriage. And as we were looking, my brother said, well... Can we play with some of these? Cinnamon smiled and so did Timothy. Come this way, children, he beckoned. We followed him to the back of the shop where there was a curtain hanging down. He pulled the curtain to the side. Go right in, he said. I, of course, went first because I was the oldest. We went marching in and we were in a room, an enormous room, and there were tables everywhere covered with Legos and Duplos. Some were already built into castles and houses and farms and spaceships and boats, and some were not. And around the entire room, it looked like there was a railroad track. And on the other side of the room, there was an engine built of Legos, but big enough for a kid to sit in. Well, that's what we all wanted to do first. We went racing over there and Cinnamon said, you can each have a turn. And while one of you's driving the engine, the rest of you can play. Well, I got the engine first because I was the biggest, like I told you. I sat in and Cinnamon said, just press the pedal. So I pressed the pedal and I saw a string. I pulled it, woo, woo, it went. And the engine started going up the track. Oh my gosh. I was so excited. I didn't even have to steer, really. I just sat inside the engine. Meanwhile, my brother and my sister had gone off and they were building Legos at one table and then they would go build Legos at another table. We had never seen so many Legos. It was amazing. And as my engine was going around the track, I could see a little sign for a station. So I stepped on the brake, Cin Cin Cinnamon told me to, stepped on the brake, Urgh! the train stopped. And I called out all the board and my brother and sister and the dog came running over and they jumped into the passenger car, which was somehow now behind me. Cinnamon said, start up again, see where you go. Well, I pressed that pedal and I pulled that string woo, woo, and the train started going and we went around a bend. We could see all the Lego tables there, but suddenly we were in another room somewhere else. We don't even know where to this day. And ahead of us, there was a castle built all of Legos, our size. The, I drove the train around the track, and there was a station right there at the castle. I stepped on the brake, and we all got out and ran to the castle where we could climb up the steps. We could go in the tower. There was a drawbridge that we could lower down. We could look at all the people. There was food, little Lego foods on the table. And somehow, though, when we picked it up, it turned into real food. Of course, we were all eating the cakes that they had there on the table. It turned into real food. Oh, I can't even tell you how much fun it was. And when we decided to go back to the big room, my brother took a turn at the engine and drove us back into that other big room. And then my sister took a turn at the engine and the baby with the dog. And when they drove us out into that 
other place. There wasn't a castle anymore, but there was a pirate ship. We pulled up at that station, got off, and we got to go on that pirate ship, and we were lowering the plank and raising the plank and going inside and up and down in that pirate ship to see what it looked like down below, and we were raising up the sails and pulling down the sails and doing things that pirates do, I guess. And then she drove us back to that big room. It was so much fun, we never wanted it to stop. And then Cinnamon called us over. Children, come to me. I have something to ask you. We're looking for the next things we should make out of Legos. What kind of a kit should we do next? And you children can give us some ideas for next year. Oh, 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 oh wow. That felt really exciting. My little sister piped up. I want a riding place where we can have horses. Cinnamon said, oh, like a stables with horses made of Legos. Yes, she said. The dog nodded. And Cinnamon wrote that down on his beautiful brown pad. My brother said, well, I want, you know, that Arctic Explorer thing you're making? I want more Arctic Explorer ones. And I want, I think, a Captain Hook Peter Pan pirate ship, even bigger than the one we saw where we could fly like Peter Pan. And Cinnamon wrote that down. And then I said, well, I think my father want, would like one like the celebrity chef because he likes to cook and then it could be a whole thing like the celebrity chef and he could go right in there in the Lego celebrity chef and he could start cooking and Timothy started laughing. Well, okay, I'll write that down. And what would you want? He looked at me and I said, I'm not sure. I think I want one with bicycle racing because I want to be a bicycle racer. Not motorcycles, but like bicycles that you have to pedal. It could be like a whole bicycle racing course and my bicycle could race against other people's bicycles and we could move them all around and they could go over jumps and they could go under bridges and they could climb up rocks. It'd be so much fun. That's what I want. <laughs> and Cinnamon wrote that down. And he said, well, children, we'll see what we can do for next year. And then he closed that big book. I can tell you, we felt very proud of ourselves for giving Cinnamon those ideas. And then Timothy said, come on now, we have to go to the next shop. Oh, we don't want to go. Timothy said, are you saying you don't want to see a new workshop? No, no, that's not what we meant. We all shook our heads. Well, come on then, children. It's time to say goodbye to Cinnamon and see where we'll go next. So Cinnamon took us out of that big back room, through the curtain, back into the little room, and took us to the door. He gave us each a big hug. And when he did, I felt like I was eating a cinnamon bun. It was wonderful. We waved goodbye, and that little shop door shut with the tinkle of a bell. Timothy was walking first, and we were, of course, trotting right behind him with the dog at the end, down to the main snowy path. Come this way, children, we turn to the left. Let's see what workshop we'll go to next. And I'll tell you about that workshop the next time we all get together. Sleep tight, sweet dreams.